Ladies and gentlemen, Governor Chris. for our party, Jim, than I am right now. America has woken up, Madam Chair, and it started after this guy took office. I think it's important that we honor the man that we're here to honor tonight, President Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan, he deserves that. He always understood that the Republican Party is a family. O. Brown, he was the guy who said that thou shalt not speak ill of a fellow Republican, the 11th commandment. It's important. So what I'm going to talk about tonight is what we ought to tell Washington. Simply three words. Enough is enough. We have had it. We have had enough of your high taxes, your big government, your bloated programs. My friends, when I came into politics, I worked for a great guy named Connie Mack, former United States Senator and a great man. <laughs> Chairman has heard me say this a lot, but he had a great slogan when he ran in 1988. Remember against Buddy McKay? Talk about a liberal. But Connie's slogan was this, less taxing, less spending, less government, more freedom. Now, those words, those words are more apropos today than ever before. Let me say it again. Less taxing, less spending, less government, more freedom. It's important that we remember why we're here. We're not just here to have a good time, we're here to have a great future. We need to be inspired. We need to understand where our heart and our soul is and what we're about as Republicans, what we're about as Floridians. It's important to remind ourselves of what it is that we're going to do in 2010. Madam Chair, you're right. It's about winning. We can't do anything unless we win. I'm an old quarterback. Mark Sharp used to play sports. I understand, and many of you understand, that we can't get into the end zone unless we do the fundamentals right, unless we block and we tackle and we work with each other to achieve victory. Unfortunately, the Bucks are learning that, but they'll get better. <laughs> they'll come around. But it really is important. We have to stand for smaller government, lower taxes, more freedom, free enterprise. I want you to know something. I'm a capitalist and proud of it. <laughs> free enterprise, entrepreneurship, the American spirit is what the Republican Party is all about. We don't want more government, we want less. We've done that in Tallahassee. Let me give you a few statistics that the chairman touched on. Since I have been governor, we have cut taxes by almost $25 billion over a five-year period beginning in 07. Senator President Jeff Atwater, Victor Christ, Rich Gloriosa, where are you, Rich? These great people deserve your applause for the great work that they have done. And they'll continue to do it. When I got elected governor, our state budget was $73 billion. Unlike Washington, we cut spending by over $7 billion. 10% we reduced it. Washington, what do they do? They increase it, 25%. They don't know how to live within their means. They don't understand the concept of personal responsibility that the chairwoman talked about. Republicans do. We get it, we understand it, and we live it. That's what we've done in Tallahassee. Let me talk about education. What's more important than great education for our young people? That's for our future. Anybody here in education, please raise your hand. We should honor you. Educators, anybody, homeschoolers, private school, charter school. When I got elected governor, Ho, out of 50 states, we were ranked 31st. But we were already on the march then. 
We were already on the march. We went last year from 31st to 14th, and this year we're in the top 10 in America in education. That's great for our future and our children. We're going to stay on that march, and we don't do it by spending more money. We do it by having accountability in the classroom, by taking a measure of what the students learn in a day, that they get a year's worth of knowledge in a year's worth of time. That's what Republicans believe in. The other party believes in something else. If spending money and throwing money at the issue like education were going to make the difference, Washington, D.C. would be number one and in the top ten. They're not. Florida is. Because we're on the right path and because we apply something simple to our way of governing. Common sense. That's all you have to do is apply common sense principles to the problems that we face and we will come out just fine. We get it in the Republican Party. I say it all the time. The people are the boss. The people are the boss. It's nice to be governor. It's great to be Senate president. It's great to be a county commissioner. But in this country, in the United States of America, the highest office in the land is the one we all hold. It's citizen. Because it's only citizen, Madam Chair, on any given election day who can change who hold those offices. You have the power entrusted to you by our founding fathers. They got it. They understood it. And we were blessed, literally <coughs> blessed by God, to have the kind of people that were in America at the time that this great nation was formed, to have the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution of these great United States. I read it all the time. I would commend you to do the same. It's incredible what you'll find in there. By the way, some great uh, amendments, like the second one, to protect your right to bear arms. <laughs> That's what we stand for as a party, and we will not let down, we will not relent, we will be relentless in the pursuit of these important freedoms. Always. Always. Let me wrap up by telling you a story about why I'm so privileged and I feel so honored to have the opportunity to be a public servant in this great country. Al and Beverly have heard this story an awful lot. It's a story about a boy. You've heard it too, Mark, about a boy named Adam. Adam is a boy who came to this country when he was 14 years old. And when Adam came to this country, he didn't have any money. He didn't know anybody. And he couldn't speak a language. But young Adam had something more powerful than those three things. He had a dream. He had a dream about coming to a place called America, where he had heard these simple rules. If you worked hard, if you lived by the rules, and you tried to do what was right, you could do better for yourself and for your family. So when Adam gets here, he works hard. He shined shoes for a living. And he made a whopping $5 a month, Jim, doing it. You think the economy's tough now. $5 a month. But he was frugal. He saved his money, Mark. He saved it so much so that eventually he was able to open up a small cafe. He was an entrepreneur, he was a businessman, he believed in free enterprise, and he was a Republican. And he was starting to live the American dream that he had heard about. But he and his wife understood something else. They understood the importance and the power of education. And they made sure that all seven of their children got a good one. One of those children became a pharmacist, one of them became a school teacher, and one of them became a doctor. The doctor is my dad. Adam was my grandfather. And because of that personal story about what this blessed country does for so many people, gives everybody a chance, I couldn't be more proud to be a public servant in the United States of America. Now, my grandfather Adam is gone. He died a number of years ago. But I guarantee you, he's here tonight. And he can see this. And I promise you this, he's enormously proud that his grandson is the governor of the fourth largest state in America. God bless you, ladies and gentlemen. God bless Florida, and God bless the United States of America. Let's win. Thank you so much.